Hi, I'm James. Occlusion in 4-6. How do we make that work? There's five principles I want to talk to you about to make your occlusion just sizzle. My goal is the restoration seats. You don't have to adjust the proximal contacts. The margins are smooth and the occlusion with articulating paper looks just like what you set up in your virtual screen for occlusion. So let's go through that process. There's five things I'm looking for to nail occlusion in 4.6, and it's just like it was in 4.5.2. So number one is when do you take your buccal scan? I like to take that before I anesthetize the patient and take the full quadrant from the distal tooth to the distal of the canine for that side of the mouth, okay? Just get as much information as you can there. Particularly if you're doing one tooth, that will stitch together really well. Also, seat the patient up when you take that buccal scan. Now, before you take the buccal scan, you want to seat the periodontal ligaments. <laughs> what do we mean by that? You want to make sure they're all seated. Periodontal ligaments can move around. So the way I do that is have them bite down together a dozen times like this. Okay, so once the PDLs are seated, when we take our buccal scan, having the patient in an upright position is more advantageous. When they're on their back, sometimes if they have a hypermobile joint, that jaw can drift back. When you take the buccal scan, have the patient bite firmly. I don't have them clench, I just have them bite firmly and have them hold that while you take that buccal scan from CEJ to CEJ. The next principles on nailing your occlusion is understanding two parameters. Now in 4.6 it's unique because your occlusal offset now is in the milling screen or what we call the manufacturer screen, okay? So you're gonna set it here on the manufacturer screen where you'll see occlusal offset and it will have a memory. So whatever you leave that occlusal offset as in the prior experience of designing will show up in the next case. In 4.6, I'm using a negative 175. So negative 175, okay, that's occlusal offset. And then the second parameter is under parameters is occlusal contact strength, okay? And that's set in your normal parameters and you can modify that in your design screen. That's gonna be at negative 50. So you have two parameters that set up your occlusion because there's a principle here on how we design your occlusal contact. Occlusal offset, negative 175. Occlusal contact strength, negative 50, okay? Now, here's the final principle for nailing that occlusion. When you're designing your occlusal contacts, and I recommend that you actually design them so you can see them, that's why these two parameters work together this way. So my occlusal contact points, which would be virtual articulating paper, are aqua in color. So I'm gonna have them on working cusp, landing pads, and marginal ridges. Now in this case, they're primarily on a marginal ridge and working cusp because she's a class three. And so what we used is legalized occlusion. So these are the principles that I use to nail it in 4.6. And I'll tell you, 4.6 is great. 4.5.2 was great. And even 4.4, these are the five principles we use. Now, tagged around these principles is preparation. And that is you have to get enough occlusal reduction right? So occlusal reduction is more than minimal thickness of your material. It's minimal thickness at least times two and sometimes three based on the nature of the occlusion. Otherwise your restoration is going to be too thin and then you compromise morphology. So the way I nail my occlusion is make sure my reduction is enough. When I take my buccal scan the patient is setting up. I have them bite firmly but before I do that I have them seat the PDLs. I make sure I understand my parameters and there's two major ones for occlusion. Occlusal offset, that's now in the manufacturer screen and occlusal contact strength and that's set up in your parameters. And then when you design your occlusal contacts, you wanna see them. I tell you, this is really, really, really accurate. The contacts that I set up on my screen is what I see with my articulating paper. I like using trofoil, it's eight microns. I'm still a Shimstock guy. And another point I need to mention is make your contact points one millimeter square, right? Because when they're one millimeter square, they're on what we call a non-inclined slope. 
and that's either a cuss tip, marginal ridge, or a landing pad. So when that opposing arch and those cusps are getting intertwined during function with this occlusal table, there's a low probability of lateral interferences. And that's really important because all teeth settle, you get this, all teeth settle once you place a restoration in there. So sometimes you don't see these lateral interferences until it's been in there for a while. So we want to cut that probability way, 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 way down. And that's why, that's why I like this system so much. <laughs> I like it because it helps me to control my occlusion. I like a light shimstock pull when I see these restorations, right? It almost pulls it. I get that about nine out of 10 times now using these principles. So four six, it's just better. It's more consistent, particularly the scan than what we had in prior versions, but the principles of occlusion still work. And I'm really happy about that. So I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.